Notion finally has a calendar feature. I think we've all been waiting for this since forever, I guess. The calendar client is pretty straightforward and it actually reminded me a lot of the built-in calendar client on my Mac. However, it has a couple of specific features that despite being simple, can completely change the way you're using Notion and you're using your calendar. First of all, first thing you have to do is connect your current calendar account to Notion. And this is where one of the biggest problems starts. You can only integrate your calendar account if it is a Google account. They are currently not supporting Outlook or other accounts, so keep that in mind. You can connect, however, as many calendar accounts as you want, assigned to multiple different Google emails. This makes it incredibly easy to see everything at a glance, including how your personal schedule matches with your professional one. To integrate a database in your Notion calendar, make sure the database you want to import as either a timeline view or a calendar view, or it won't show up on your list. This doesn't mean, however, that calendar or timelines need to be your default views. I personally love to work in database views and would never switch to timeline or calendar because of this. So all you have to do is create one of those views, even if you're not using it. Remember that when you use a date or time property, it will only show up in a specific time slot if you also toggle include time, or else it will be scheduled as an all-day event and will appear in the upper part of your calendar. And now let's talk about the most important thing here, task management. How can you actually manage your tasks using Notion Calendar like you would with a traditional task manager like TickTick? Well, first of all, let's use TickTick as an example to replicate into your new Notion ecosystem. TickTick, as well as many other task managers like Todoist, use the concept of lists to organize tasks. Ideally, these lists should cover broad task categories, such as personal tasks, business tasks, family tasks, and others. The more lists you create, the more difficult organizing and keeping track of your tasks will be. Now, with Notion Calendar, you are importing info from one database to populate your calendar. So you have two different choices here. Either you create one different database per broad category, like each one is a list, like you see on TickTick, or you create one main database and use filtered views to keep track of your tasks while you are on Notion. While with the first option, these tasks will migrate to your Notion Calendar each in their separate list, in the second option, they will all belong to the same list. The problem here is that if you like to color code your time blocks, if you're using one main database only, all tasks independently of their filter or the sort function in its original database will be colored equally. A good workaround is using emojis to differentiate different categories, even if you are in the same database. So for instance, if you're dealing with a personal task, you can pick one icon for that task and then it will be easier to pinpoint it across your calendar. However, if you want to filter your calendar using broad categories like you do in your original database, you will not have that option. Also, in case you added more details to a task you're importing from your database, remember that all of these tasks can be opened into pages and then they can be fully customizable. All you have to do is click open in Notion and the respective page will pop up. Notion Calendar also allows you to block your calendar to mark your availability. And this works in a very similar way to AccuFlow. You basically click share availability, then click and drag across your calendar. And now you're able to select whether you'd like to pick Zoom or Google Meets for your conference system of choice, and then send the link to your availability directly to team members, family, or clients. This is all managed within the same ecosystem, which makes it super easy to manage different appointments without having to micromanage your schedule and worrying about meeting overlap. All in all, Notion Scanner is a type of bare bones app that I actually really like. It doesn't try to do more than it should. All of its features work incredibly well. It syncs perfectly and quickly, and it's easy to navigate. And the learning curve is almost non-existent. Just remember that Notion Calendar is not supposed to be a task manager. It's great to see your appointments. It's great for time blocking. However, it doesn't have the same features that task managers like TickTick will provide you with. Managing tasks through your calendar is not as quick as it would be with a calendar feature embedded into a task manager. And also you will not have things like the Eisenhower matrix 
or habit trackers. All of that needs to be managed within Notion and then it needs to be imported to your calendar via database view. You know, all in all, I'm still going to use Notion for both project management and note taking. And the good news is I designed a full work dashboard in Notion, which is completely free with your Nebula subscription. Besides this free template and its corresponding guide, you can also find more exclusive videos on Nebula like setup planners, routines and walkthroughs that I never published on YouTube before, because all well, they were topics and formats that YouTube doesn't really like and it would end up killing those videos anyway. Nebula is a great platform built by creators. We can post whatever we want without having to worry about YouTube's algorithm. And because of that, it's a completely ad-free and sponsor-free platform. And we can post so much exclusive content, classes and video series you can't find anywhere else. You can search for this icon, for instance, to know you're watching a video that still isn't available on YouTube. And this icon to know you're watching something that will never be available anywhere else. And I love to receive everyone's emails and messages saying they're watching all of my videos now on Nebula because that's always the best way to support my content. And of course, I'm not alone. If you browse Nebula, you'll find so many other creators, including so many people from the STEM community and the productivity community as well. And here's the fun part. A Nebula annual plan costs basically two and a half dollars per month. And this is not only for Nebula, but for Nebula classes too. And that's definitely one of the best things on the platform. So click the link in the description box below and I really hope to see you there. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.